Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this episode of Penny Swift Tips, we will continue our exploration of jailbroken devices. Today, we will have a look at another way of checking whether your device is jailbroken. This check is harder to be bypassed because it works by checking which dynamic libraries are loaded into our process. On jailbroken devices, there are some additional libraries that get loaded with almost every process and if you find them loaded, it is a clear sign that your app is running on a jailbroken device. In addition to that, we will have a look at one more uh, advancement, let's say, of this method that will allow you to detect whether your app is currently exploited by SciCrypt. SciCrypt is a tool that can attach dynamically to your process and from there an attacker can play with your app in real time. Continue watching if you want to know how you can protect your app from that. Alright guys, so here we are on my computer again. This is where we left our jailbreaking checks last time. So today we'll explore one other way of checking whether you're running on a jailbroken phone or not. This time we'll check for the availability of specific dynamic libraries that get added to most projects on a jailbroken setups. There is a framework called Mobile Substrate that is really common on jailbroken phones. All tweaks that are installed there in, from Cydia, pretty much most of them rely on it. And if you find it loaded in the uh, available in your code, there is a C functions that will give you all of the loaded dynamic frameworks. If you find it there, your phone is jailbroken. So let me show you how you can do this check. First, let's make another file, but this time it will be a C file. It won't be Swift one because we need to call some specific things that are available in C. You can call them from Swift 2. However, uh, better write it in, Swift, in C because it's e easier that way. I mean, uh, let me show you what I mean. But maybe you may not know how to write C code in your Swift project. So, in order to do that, add a new file but go this time here, C file. And say something like, and take this one here to also create a header file. And if that's the first file written in C or Objective C or C++ in your project, you will be asked to whether you want to have a bridging header Yes, you need one because uh, in the end we want to enter to expose this custom function that we'll write to our Swift code. So yes, we want bridging header. And what you want in this bridging header is to have this include statement there. So so that you exp uh, expose your function from there. So let's go in this file now, the C file, and write our function. Okay, so this is our function that will check whether a specific module is loaded. What it does is that it uses these functions provided by Apple that can give you information about your current runtime, what, it, what is loaded and mapped into memory and it's available and what is not. And pretty much what we're doing is we're taking their count and iterating through all of the modules loaded. And if we find the one that we need, see how I passed it as a parameter, I've did it that way because 
Later, I'll show you checks for other modules in addition to mo mobile substrate that are loaded, typically loaded on jailbroken phones. That's why I've added as a parameter. Uh, but for now, let's see. so pretty much, yeah, we're looking at their names and checking whether it's the one that we're searching. If it is, true. If not, false. Cool. Uh, how you expose this to be called? So in your header file, you have to go here. That's the jailbreak module check header. Put this function here and made a template of it. So that's called a function template and you have to have it with your C functions. Uh, however, if this happens, just grab these headers and move them here and it should all go fine. Cool. So if we build the project now, we'll see that it's compiling nicely again. And if we go in our view controller, we could call this function. However, it won't work with Swift strings. So yeah, it wants char pointer. So it's better for us to do something else again in C and then use it in Swift. But first, before doing all of that, let me first show you what exactly these names are, what they look like. We could do this with the print function. And if we print just the name like that of this and have this parameter maybe like what maybe yeah if we comment this out here so that we don't use the parameter we could just pass nil for now and call the function so that you could see what the names look like of the loaded modules so let's go to our view controller and call our C function has loaded module has loaded module named and pass here nil for name because it's a pointer pointer can point to nil that's fine and now we will print all of the loaded modules of the jailbroken phone again. That's the jailbroken environment. Let's look at it, what we'll have. So the app runs. Uh, yeah, it's passing through the old breakpoints. Don't pay attention to them. And this is what we're printing. These are all of the things that are mapped into the memory, the virtual memory of our application. So, some uh, low level Swift things, core graphics, core foundation, uh, static library from C or something, yeah, CF network. All these low level things. But if we have a closer look, we'll find, for example, this thing here CDS substrate. This is available, as you can uh, see, on the jailbroken phones. However, if we check for that on non-jailbroken phones, you will see that that's missing. And that's a way to tell, again, and that's I think it's a more re reliable way, because this check is more advanced. Less people will try to crack it. And in order to fake this from the operating point, from the operating uh, systems side of things, you have to know a lot, a lot things, a lot of things about how iOS works, and so that's a more complex check. In general, there are more things that you could find here that are 
like mobile substrate I think mobile substrate yep here it is if you see this your phone is jailbroken that's certain cool so you got the idea of what these names are I will copy them somewhere is jailbroken true on a jailbroken setup yes cool and let's run the same thing now on non jailbroken phone and spot the difference okay so here it is this phone is not jailbroken that's my iphone xr and these are the libraries that are loaded let's go here make a new file and put this thing there and compare the files side by side let's say one of them will be here the other here so uh, yeah the format is not really good actually for comparison I thought they will be on different lines so that we could see more modules are loaded on the jailbroken setup and less are loaded on the standard one but yeah cool this won't happen but here if I search for mobile substrate you can't really find it but in the jailbroken setup it's clearly here the same goes for Cydia if I search for Cydia I have some appearances if I search for Cydia here nothing is found so yeah those are the things that we'll check for now let's go in Xcode and implement that alright so I have did a couple of changes to our code the function body stays the same however I have made all of the tricks that we have discussed in our previous videos about obfuscation jailbreak jailbreaking related code so the method names are different uh, in the header file I have added this attribute to our function template uh, declaration it's the analog of the compiler hint for inlining functions in C so we want this inlined whenever possible two I have written documentation about it and I gave the original name so that the users of it will know and also I have written a short list of all modules from these places here that are uh, just some modules uh, you know examples of names some of them are let's call them scary and they give information that you run on a job broken phone like this one and this one for example and some of them are pretty standard things this is uh, this available on all phone setups this thing too so yeah in addition to our model loaded checks I have added one more file jailbreak modules and all of these are checking whether specific module is loaded or it's not so for example this method will check whether mobile substrate is loaded if it is the phone is jailbroken it will check it with the help of our uh, function here this one has loaded module it's the same with has cdia substrate loaded we're searching for that string specifically there's one other tool called scikit uh, that i'll make a separate video about it because it's uh, really it will take a lot of time to cover a lot of time here from this video but scikit again is still available on jailbroken setups so if you find it that means you're running on a jailbroken environment the same thing with this uh, tool has dump decrypted loaded dump decrypted is again tool for decrypting 
App Store encrypted binaries. In order to start reverse engineering them, you first have to decrypt them. So this is what this is the first step that every attacker does. And it basically this tool, uh, how it works is it's embedding a dynamic framework in the runtime of your app. And this dynamic framework has something that is called uh, something similar to constructors in classes. And it's a function which when gets called, basically it reads all of the memory uh, of your application that is available to your app. So all the virtual memory there. And it just uh, basically all of the things that have, uh, have been read from the RAM are overwritten in the binary and a new binary is created without the encryption anymore. So basically you're letting the iPhone to encrypt the binary on its own and you're just dumping the encrypted version. That's how this tool works. There, It's an open source tool, there's a source code to it. You can check and see how exactly it performs these tasks. It does it in C, I think and it relies on a couple of system calls in ios but this thing here should block it i think i haven't tested it on encrypted binaries but in theory this encryption should work and the same thing for class dump uh, and all of its variants it side loads again a dynamic framework in your process and that's how it gathers all of the information about the classes in your app and generates headers from them. All of these functions are returning bools, all of them are inlined and what they do what they do is pretty much they check again whether the specific string is available and the list of these strings. That's all they're doing. And again, I'm doing the same tricks here with the strings. I'm uh, just like the previous videos. I'm encoding them in base64 so that I don't have them stored directly in their raw format in our binary because someone could just quickly look at it and understand what is happening. So that's why I prefer to store them like that and de decode them and encode them from binary 64. For that thing, I'm using uh, B64 library. It is created, like I found it in this GitHub page, have the license here. So it's created by these guys, Little Star Media. It's a standard base 64 encoder and decoder. So nothing wrong with it. It's uh, licensed under MIT. And so I have did just uh, one modification. I have switched the names again of the functions because they are clearly visible and I don't want them to be. So that's why I have swapped the names with something that is not meaningful for the encoding parts the method that is decoding uh, i don't care about it because during the optimization phases because it's not called from anywhere it will get stripped and first marked as a dead code and it will be removed from the binary so you could even delete this file you can even delete everything like you won't be using it we're using only the encoding bit and here it is that's how it's implemented mobile substrate we're checking whether this thing exists and if it's loaded we're saying it otherwise if has module loaded returns false then yeah nothing happens we're saying we don't know for sure that's how all of them work this thing is pretty powerful uh, in order for someone to pass through it, it has to either recompile all of these things and switch their names, which is a task that not many attackers are able to do. 
or it has to somehow hide this from the operating system or another way to break this security is to have the binary encrypted and then knob out the region like disable the assembly instructions in the uh, in our executable file for these checks but that's again uh, a much harder thing to do so yeah with these kind of checks you really can't protect fully against everything it's just that the more effort it takes for your app to be cracked the less people will be capable of doing it so yeah try to make it as harder as, as you can and those are all the things here yeah that's pretty much what it does let's run uh, a check you we could even do something else we could let's say in our swift app we could fire an ns timer that will check on every half a second let's say whether some of these modules are loaded because they are dynamically linked which means that in the beginning your app may not have them and if you're checking only in the beginning of your app launch like when your app launches some of them may not be loaded and later they will get loaded and so your check will skip them it's good if you're checking all the time especially for tools like sycrypt when users are hooking later you need this check uh, definitely so let's implement a function that will check these things constantly okay so here is what I did I have a new file called jailbreak test and in it I have declared an inline swift function that will call all of our C functions for checking whether these modules are loaded and uh, if at least one of them is loaded then this function will return true otherwise it will return false and on top of that we have a function, another function, that will call this one every half a second. So, by doing this, if we just invoke this from somewhere, we'll check on a background thread whether some bad modules are loaded, and if that's the case, and if some of them is loaded, we're quitting the app straight away, so that nothing bad could happen to the user's data cool so let's call this and observe what will happen if we go here so this is the not jailbreak on phone let's run the app again and see what will happen so the print statement here is saying that the phone is not jailbroken and the app is currently running i don't have it in quick time so i can't show you but yeah it's just fine as you can see it's still running nicely all good Let's try and run it now on a jailbroken phone and see what the difference is. Alright, so I have my jailbroken phone attached. It says that it's jailbroken, but you see the app quits. In fact, let me show it in quick time. So I'll run the app and watch what happens. So the app launches and it crashes because of our method here. It crashes specifically because we have mobile substrate and serial substrate loaded currently. However, if we disable these just for uh, for the purpose of showing how it, it's doing it in, uh, in real time, if I disable these two and I run the app again, the app will run just nicely. So is your broken through? Yep. But it doesn't crash. Let's now try and hook with Sycrypt and observe what will happen. So this is our app. That's the process ID that currently the iPhone is uh, using for this app that we have. So if I do this thing, Sycrypt hook to this process, this is the app. It's still running nicely look what will happen when 
the Cycrypt uh, dynamic framework gets injected into the code. So it injects it. Cycrypt fails because the process exists. And when you do this, no one can mess around with your app with Cycrypt. No one can observe and inspect what classes you have and can no one can hook into it and do uh, you know all sorts of uh, UI tinkering or even playing with your uh, business logic classes so that's cool and it's totally real time as you saw thanks for your watching guys in my opinion this is the most advanced jailbreak check that one could perform in order to be bypassed without patching the binary itself, one has to recompile all these libraries for which we are searching for and then have them sideloaded. But this will stop most attackers because the process is not easy. I hope that this information will be useful in your future projects. Have a nice day. Bye bye.